Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm absolutely thrilled and Discovered is thrilled to have Lisa here, he here today. If you can call in the comments real quick, let us know you can hear us. Lisa, if you could just say a little hello, how are you doing? So everyone can <laughs> chime in that they can hear us. You can see us all right. Feel free also to call out where you're coming from, what you're excited. Oh, we got someone already excited hey. for this. I guess we are too. Hey, uh, let us know where you're coming from. If there's certain things you're excited to learn today. I know I got my little cookie and a couple frosting set up. Uh, so I'm thrilled to see what I can make. Can hear. Can you guys hear uh, me okay? Can you all hear Lisa all right? Okay. Hello. Test, test, we got test, Jessica. Test. <laughs> Jessica's coming in from the Rock of Gibraltar. We got, we got Allison coming from Florida. Thank you so much for coming from all over. It means a lot to us. We're just going to take a quick second here, make sure people are rolling in mm -hmm. and happy. Feel free, like I said, call out if there's certain things you're excited to learn today. Uh, I want to set some expectations real quick. <laughs> uh, set some expectations real quick. Uh, Lisa, she's going to maybe move a little fast because we only have a limited time here but we will have a replay available. It'll be emailed to you and there will be a link in the chat for those as well. And then we will have a dedicated Q&A at the end of the whole presentation. Feel free to throw your questions in the chat if you just know you're gonna forget them or write them down and we'll have a dedicated time for all of that. Um, but to give a proper introduction here, we have Lisa He here today. Uh, Lisa is going to be giving us a little course, Basic Decorating Techniques for Cookies Under the Sea and on the Beach. So hopefully you all got your color coordinations ready. Uh, what you should expect to learn in this course today is how to create texture and dimension on sugar cookies using royal icing and modeling chocolate. Uh, oh, real quick, Ingrid saying, I'm excited to learn about the best cookie to frosting ratio. I'm sure Lisa will cover that. Quick bio for Lisa. Lisa, he is the founder and CEO of Borderlands Bakery, a company that offers baking related products in the shop, a blog full of helpful posts, YouTube with long form content and digital courses like the one she will talk about a little later today. Uh, while pursuing her engineering degree and a career in biotech, Lisa fostered a love for cookies decorating and education. Eventually, her work was noticed and she has had the opportunity to be featured on Netflix, the Food Network, and a bunch of other publications. In November 2019, Lisa left her biotech career to serve the Borderlands community, baker the Borderlands bakery community mm -hmm. full time. Uh, Lisa, are you feeling good? Do you want to take over? Let yeah, us know a little go. what we're getting into. Everyone let's feeling go. good? Thank All you, right. Jenna. I'll let you right. take the stage, Lisa. All right. So, guys, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, um, joining us in the middle of the week on Hump Day. So, really appreciate your time. So happy to see all these people from various places across the U.S. and maybe international too. Today, I'm going to be doing two demos on the cookies. Um, if you are brand new to all this world of cookie decorating and stuff, I've been doing this for about ten years now. And um, the cookie decorating world has really, really grown during that time. Um, I do mostly teaching now, and we have a supply shop, like Jonah mentioned earlier, and we do tons of tutorials. Lots of them are just free. You can find them on our Instagram and on YouTube. But for today, we're actually going to take a look at these two cookies. So we've got a seahorse cookie that's got seahorses. It's under the sea. It's got some seaweed and some cute sprinkles. And we're also going to be doing um, an easier shell cookie. So one with dimension, one with a little less dimension. They're all going to pop and be super cute. And it's going to be great because this is one of the classes that we'll include later on in the course that we'll talk about later. So I baked these cookies and they're blank. So these are a very vanilla bean, very vanilla bean sugar cookie base. They are rolled at about eight millimeters thick. Somebody asked, you know, what's the perfect cookie to icing ratio? It's the ratio that you like and that you want to eat or whoever you're baking for wants to like or wants to eat. But basically, if you look at it from the side, that's the cookie to icing ratio. Just uh, one of my old cookies from one of my other classes. 
in this demo because uh we only have about 45 minutes and we don't want to bore everybody with the actual dough making and rolling out and baking and icing making i've done all of that ahead of time i'm also going to be leaning into my dehydrator that you see behind me for help that way we can get our layers to dry a lot faster we are going to move quick let us know in the chat if you have any questions or comments Jonah is going to jump in and get those questions in as I'm working. I'm is actually there a question? pop yeah. in in real quick. I had one question. Will we have to use any special tools for today? We do have some here. So I've got some molds and these are going to be for the modeling chocolate and you can make your own modeling chocolate. We actually have a YouTube video on how to make it from home. It's very simple. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Go check it out, or you can Google Borderlands Bakery Modeling Chocolate. You can also buy modeling chocolate, so we're also going to need this guy. Um, get it on Amazon. I'm not sure if Michael sells modeling chocolate. They only do fondant. Real quick, modeling chocolate versus fondant. Fondant dries hard. Uh, modeling chocolate is chocolate-based, so it tastes like white chocolate, and it dries a little softer. So to always have a little give, you don't want to be stacking cookies with a lot of modeling chocolate on them. So that's my two cents. We're also going to be painting our seahorses. So I've got some paint brushes here. I've got a palette with a lid on it. And you can kind of see that because it's lidded, a lot of the pigment that I put in there, you can just let it dry and close it up and reuse it again and really reduce how much waste you have. And I dilute all my colors. So I could be using gel colors or I could be using powder food colors and I dilute them with a vodka. And the reason why we use alcohol is because alcohol evaporates very quickly, leaving behind only the pigment and it dries so fast, you don't have to worry about it. And if you can't do alcohol for whatever reason, you can also try orange juice. All right. So we're going to get into it. And again, I got one skipping all the boring parts, no baking, rolling, icing, making. Uh, yeah. I got one quick comment that I know is worth it. Cause I've wondered the same. Can we make fondant at home? You can make fondant at home. So Ooh. take a look at YouTube and look for marshmallow fondant recipes. There are a ton out there. You can make it in the microwave. There's a lot of kneading involved, and I promise you it'll taste a little better than stuff from the, the store, um, but yes. And if you need a recommendation for fondant, Michael's has a brand called The Sweet Shop, S-H-O-P-P-E. Actually tastes decent, and the chocolate one tastes like Twitsy Roll, so check it out. <laughs> Got just one more good follow up, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. I usually use marshmallow fondant on my cookies. This is coming from Jessica from the Rock of Gibraltar, but okay. want to start transitioning into icing my cookies. So any guidance on this will be appreciated. If you're going to cover that, don't worry yeah. about it. But I figured it was worth popping it. No, it's a that's a great question. So Jessica, we uh, making icing is probably one of the harder parts of this whole decorating with icing thing because there are a gazillion types of consistencies that you have to learn how to do. We go over those consistencies in our course, which is super comprehensive. And we'll talk about it more towards the end after the demo, but throughout you'll actually see me use um, icing of various consistencies. And I put them in these tipless piping bags, I actually manufacture these piping bags. Let's get into it and you'll kind of see the various consistencies how they behave. And if you have more questions after, we can give you a little bit of an extra lift, all right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch my camera angle so that it is angled down towards my workspace, just like this, okay? So this is going to be our workspace angle. Let me adjust things so that you can see a little better. This is my normal workspace. We're not doing anything sneaky here. I didn't even clean up for you guys because it's important to see just what real life is kind of like. Um, I'm going to be demoing these two cookies today and I've pre-mixed all my icing. Let's put that here. And depending on what kind of look you're getting for your cookies. So like for the shell cookie, we have to lay down a layer. For the, the, the seahorse cookie, we gotta lay down a layer of base icing before adding the little details. 
And then I'm gonna use a dehydrator in between the layers to help the layers set faster so I can put on the next layer. So you kind of have to be strategic about what layers go on when, that way you can kind of be most efficient with your time. So we're going to start with a seahorse cookie, put the background on. I'm gonna put a blue fill on the background and then put some white dots on it to give it a little bit of like a air bubble sort of look, okay? So these are tipless piping bags and it comes with one seam. In the course that we offer, we go through all the details of how to fill these bags, how to color your icing, how to cut your bags, what the consistencies look like, and what kind of food color we use, all of that. It's, uh, it's a lot. We guide you through every single step, but for today, you only get to see the fun, fun part of actually getting it done. So we're going to trim our tipless piping bags. The seam is right down the middle. We're going to flatten the tip as much as possible and cut straight across and it's also a matter of practice and hands-on experience getting the feel for your icing and figuring out how it behaves i also have a little tool here we also make these you can tell we make we offer a lot of these my work mat is also from our shop these are all custom design products that we have and this is a scribe tool basically it's a very sharp pointy needle and it helps break any air bubbles in the surface of your icing as well as help manipulate your icing so that you can move it to where you want it to be so that is what the scribe is for and i also have these what's up jonah <laughs> i just had a quick question uh because i yeah. know i haven't always had like piping bags around is there an easy household item you can grab to use yes as an alternate piping bag Absolutely. I love that question. If you don't have piping bags, Ziploc bags were fine. I think the only downside of Ziplocs is they might bust with pressure and that's really it. But Ziplocs work amazingly well. So definitely use that if you don't have that. And I've colored this kind of a sky blue. And I also have a little towel here. You can use a piece of wet paper towel. These are cellulose towels that we design uh, reusable paper towels. One of these uh replaces seven rolls of paper towels so we waste a lot in cookie decorating with plastic and other things so when when we can save we will save all right so we are going to get right into this and the way that i flood is i use a single consistency so i don't outline with a stiffer consistency and then have to fill with a different one because i'm too lazy and i just want to make one consistency of icing. As you get into cookie decorating, you'll notice that mixing icing takes freaking forever. And anything we can do to save on that is going to be helpful. So first thing we're going to do is when we're gonna lay down the base icing, we're gonna to touch down using a dragging and dropping motion, lay on that background and just outline it first, touching down only when there is a sharp change in direction. Otherwise, we let the icing fall behind us. That way you get this really smooth outline. And pressure is even as you're letting it fall behind you and you kind of release that pressure as you touch down and end your line. Okay, and then as you fill it in, we're going to move our piping bag to 90 degrees and just really squeeze. This is the same consistency, same size hole in the bag, and I'm not being super perfect because we're gonna use our scribe to fill in any empty spaces. And I like to go from outside in, you are free to go from inside out, whatever that you end up being most comfortable for you you'll only really find out once you do it. Make sure you get enough icing on there. I see a lot of people not getting enough icing on there. And I'm just gonna pinch off the tip so that I don't get icing everywhere. And a quick tip, I'm just going to twist this and shove the tip in on itself. And now, you know, you don't got icing leaking everywhere and we're gonna set that aside. Wipe off my hands, use our scribe tool really get in there okay. 
And I live in a very, very dry climate. And you can almost see that my icing is already beginning to set because of how dry it is where I live. Depending on the humidity levels in your environment, your icing may set faster or a lot slower. I've got some friends in Texas where it's very humid and they have to leave their icing out for a long time before it sets. So with our recipe, which is included in the course, it's a pretty fast setting icing. So when that's done, I like to give it a side to side jiggle and a firm tap. You can do this on the surface as well. Clean off your scribe. I'm gonna get rid of any of the small peaks by oscillating my scribe back and forth. Just oscillation. And actually, let me get a light. I want to give you guys a little more light. So let me do that real quick. Lisa, if I can ask real quick, are there, if, if people are really getting into this, are there any sort of like specialized dehumidifiers for oh, people yeah. living in more? Okay. So those are. Those? Are those things. <laughs> um, so those are dehydrators and they're fantastic for getting your icing to set way faster. Um, I would also say that for those of you who do live in just such humid, so anything above 70 is very, very humid. 70% uh, humidity is super humid. I only live in like 35% humidity. Um, even if you're in the 50s, 40 to 50s, you'll notice a difference in the way that your icing behaves. You are free to use a dehumidifier for your home as well if you're going to make this like a, like a, Thing you get super serious about, and a lot of people get really serious about cookie decorating. So super good question, Jonah. All right, let's get back in this. Okay, so we're actually going to take our white and put on some dots on the surface here. Sorry for that squeak, just moving the camera angle. I've trimmed this and I'm simply gonna go in this is a wet on wet technique where you're going to put wet icing on icing that is freshly piped on and it's going to sink into itself and form a single layer. We're just putting some kind of, you know, bubbles, we're putting some bubbles. Okay. So now we've got our cookie with some bubbles in it. It's what it looks like from the side. I'm gonna throw this in the dehydrator. You're gonna hear a little hum in the background. Hopefully it's not too disruptive, but it'll have all this airflow and royal icing requires airflow for it to dry. So don't cover up your cookies if you're going to be using royal icing. Otherwise your icing will never ever dry. Throwing that in the dehydrator, give me one moment. Lisa, if, uh, if you can answer while you're doing that, we had one question, which was what in what's in the icing? Like what ingredients are you okay. using? Okay, so the icing consists of powdered sugar, which usually has a tiny bit of cornstarch in it. We also put light corn syrup in it to help soften the bite of that icing. We also have meringue powder in it and vanilla extract. And we walk you through all the ratios and the technique for making that in our comprehensive course. And I think what you'll find is most recipes use the same base ingredients. It's really the ratio and the technique that differentiates how different icings behave and look. Traditional royal icing is made with egg whites. So like if you crack an egg and you separate the whites from the yolk, um, that's the traditional way. And it dries to a really, really hard crack. So it like snaps, like a ginger snap. But um, I, especially in America, we like a softer icing. So adding that corn syrup softens it up. Tidbits. We got a very, another really relevant one since we All just right, did let's these. Go. Since yeah. we just did these dots, uh, Jessica is saying, I can never get even dots. They look all over the place. Any tips for just those? Um, honestly, and people hate hearing this, but it's about practice and understanding how to control how much icing flows out of your bag. So if you want consistency in your techniques and the way how they look, 
you have to get consistent with your piping techniques and that's purely practice. And you don't have to practice on a cookie either. You can pipe it on parchment. We sell these things called nada cookies, which are like faux cookies. Oh, I don't have one within reach. Oh, I do have one within reach. Woo. Okay, not a cookie, not a cookie. And these mimic the surface of a cookie. It's not just like a piece of paper because they behave so differently from the surface of a cookie. The icing holds and kind of moves differently. These are fantastic. You can grab these from our shop or from their website, notacookie.com. Practice cookies. All right, we're gonna work on our next cookie, which is the shell. And the shell, we're gonna keep it real simple. And uh, our friend is going to see, this is going to be another wet on wet technique. I have a little baby pink peachy base here. I'm going to trim this off just the tip and I'm going to fill it in. We call that flooding. And we're using the same technique as we did for the blue by outlining the shape first using a single consistency. And then we're going to fill it in by applying more pressure. And I just want to let you guys know, I've been doing this again for 10 years, so things look very easy and fast. But as you get into cookie decorating, please be kind and patient with yourselves. Like learning anything, it's a, it's a process, right? So all those beautiful Pinterest cookies that you might see, a lot of behind the scenes time and practice goes into them. And Lisa, you're just controlling the amount coming out just with pressure, right? Purely with pressure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, so, that is practice. <laughs> it is tons of practice. And if you feel like it's a pain in the rear to get that um, icing out, cut the hole a little bit bigger. I think I've noticed that pretty much every single person that I've interacted with, and I've interacted with thousands of cookiers at this point, there's a slight difference in preference between technique for all of us, and that's totally okay, but you don't know what you're gonna like until you actually go through the process of doing and trying. Also, quick tip, I like to use embroidery scissors for trimming my bags because they are super sharp and leaves a really clean cut behind. So I used my scribe to kind of even that out. And I'm actually going to go in and put like, drag my scribe through this and create a little bit of a pattern in the back, background. Just get it all combined together. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Tap, 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 help it settle. And if you see, this is gonna happen. So sometimes you over flood a cookie and it starts falling off the side just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm still hanging on, I'm hanging on. It means you just added a little bit too much icing. You can kind of scrape it off with the side of your scribe. Mine is barely falling off, but it was a good opportunity to kind of show you that as a tip. You can use your scribe to adjust how close you want your icing to the edges. And then this layer is going to be done too, and we're going to move on to our modeling chocolate. I'm going to put this into our dehydrator so that it would set faster. Give me one moment. I'm going to steal this second again, Lisa. Uh, yep. We got another good question. We don't get corn syrup in Gibraltar. Is glucose syrup a decent substitute? Oh, that's actually that's fantastic. We need, to, we need to look each other in the eye for this one. Um, so I think glucose syrup is a little bit different from corn syrup. Check uh, the ingredients of light corn syrup. So Google ingredients in light corn syrup and do your research on what type of sugar that is. If it's the wrong type, um, so glucose and sucrose and all those things are slightly different sugars. If they're not in the same family or category of sugars, it will mess with your icing. Uh, 
send us an email if you can't find it, help at borderlandsbakery.com. We might have some additional suggestions for you if that's just not in the cards, okay? Um, don't get anything that's brown because that's going to make your icing brown. So look for the things that are clear and check what type of sugar it is before you buy it. And send us an email if you have trouble. Okay. Now we are going to show you how to use molds for modeling chocolate. All right, so these molds, you can get them on Amazon. So search seahorse molds or we carry these in our shop as well. Uh, I'm going to be fully transparent here and the seahorse, even though it's super cute, is a pain in the rear to mold because it's very detailed. So follow along and I will show you the easiest way I know of how to mold this. Got cornstarch here and a little fluffy brush. I'm going to dump my fluffy brush in my cornstarch and really buff it into the crevices of the mold that will help it release. Okay. So just uh, get nicely in there. Yeah. I got, uh, we've got asking is corn flour and corn starch the same for this? Um, I believe yes. And I believe in the UK and in other non American areas, it's called corn flour. I would definitely double check. And I, I, I do believe they are the same. Um, that's also a great question to, just double check via the Google machine. I've got the Fonderific sculpting chocolate right now. And it is just white chocolate. It comes like this. This plastic piece helps keep it moist. And then we only need a little bit for what we're doing today. You guys can apply these techniques to fondant and gum paste as well. I just like modeling chocolate the most. Like honestly, it just tastes like white chocolate. It's fantastic. All right, so you need it. If you have very warm hands, wear some gloves because this will melt in your hands. My hands are relatively cool. You can also get an ice pack, kind of lay it out here, put your mold on the ice pack in between. That'll help the demolding process be a lot easier. And the way you put them in the molds is you just shove it in with your fingers. Um, also, nobody's going to be eating these except for me, so I'm not wearing gloves. I've got uh, nails on and all that stuff. Just a disclaimer for food, health, and safety stuff. But you shove it in. You can use the palm of your hand to kind of wiggle it. You do want to make sure you don't have a lot of overhang. Otherwise, you're going to end up weeding, having to spend the time to clean up the edges of your modeling chocolate. And it's just too much work. So try to just kind of shove the edges in, get them as clean as you can. I'm going to let this sit on the side for a little bit so that it can kind of cool down from me manipulating it. You can also use like seashell molds or whatever you like, really. Let's just do one more for fun. Ooh, we should probably put cornstarch in there, right? Kind of a nightmare if you don't dust your uh, molds ahead of time. But I just want to show you with a simpler shape, like this mollusk shell, I believe. It's very easy to demold. Just kind of flip it upside down, and I peel it back, and I push, and it should just pop out, just like that. Super cute a great way to add accents to your cookies. I'm the worst drawer in the world. So any kind of hack that I can do is very helpful for me. And I think you'll find that if you end up, you know, following us on Instagram or looking at our content, everything we do is kind of minimum impact, maximum effort. So even in the way that we teach and design our courses, it's really minimum impact, maximum effort. How do we get the coolest cookie designs with the least amount of work? Because they already take a long time. As you can tell, we're only doing two cookies today. And if you can minimize it, good. All right, so that's that. And I think this guy is, mm, let's try it together, shall we? Let's try it. I'm going to pull on the sides. And just, you can see it start to release. Oh, we did a good job. Good job, us, team. And then we gently pull our 
seahorse out. How cute. And then I'm going to set them aside because we are going to paint this little guy. Give us some room here. And let's see, what do we need to grab? I'm going to grab a little container. Give me one moment. little sauce container and I just need to get uh, my vodka out this is the cheapest vodka that I could find it's for painting with just get a little bit of them out grab your palette and I also have a pipette this will help me easily transfer my alcohol from my container into my palette. And we're going to paint our little guy here. So you can kind of see in the picture, we actually airbrushed this little guy with an ombre kind of look, but we're going to do something a little simpler today and we'll be using various colors, as well as this guy, which is edible glitter. It's called Diamond Dust. And this is uh, made by a company called The Sugar Art. They are one of the first companies in the US to make fully edible, FDA compliant glitter. Fantastic. I uh, find excuses to put that on everything. All right, so the way that you make the colors is very simple. I have a little bit of gold, a little bit of green. We're going to throw a little orange on there and a little blue. I am simply rehydrating the colors that I had used before. And I'm going to go from light color to dark color. And we're not going to be like super detailed and super perfect today. We just need to get the point across for this demo. So let me actually put this guy on a, not a cookie. That way we can see it a little clearer. And I'm going to start with, let's see, let's start with our little peachy orange here. Get one of your brushes, a little bit of peachy orange. Maybe we'll do some pink too. We got some pink in the middle. And let's start coloring him. And you will see that it's going to dry relatively quickly. I like to wipe off my brush in between colors. And I'm right-handed, so if I'm looking awkward, if my angle look, looks awkward, it, it probably is. And again, you can wear gloves or anything like that if your hands run cool. Lisa, while you're, while you're yes. working on that, had a, another question. What? Uh, what brand of modeling chocolate, or I, I guess, what is your preferred brand of modeling chocolate? I have two preferred brands. Um, one of them is called Hot Hands Modeling Chocolate. You can find it on Amazon. We actually, if you check out our Amazon shop, we link um, our favorites to you guys. They are the exact ones that we use. So you can just Google Borderlands Bakery Amazon shop, go down to the fondant slash modeling chocolate section, and we got that linked for you but Hot Hands and Fondorific are my favorite brands of modeling chocolate. Their fondant is decent too, if you look at Fondorific. So I'm just putting in basically an ombre of colors. And then finally, we'll buff some gold in there because it's cute. And I know this isn't perfect, but we want you to get a good feel for it. And then maybe you'll join us for class. All right, so I think he's good enough for now. I gotta put an eyeball on him. I'm gonna do that super easily with an edible marker. This is called a rainbow dust marker. You can get these on Amazon as well. They are dual sided food markers. Let me just show you real quick. One side has a really fine print. If you guys ever use those Sharpies that are designed for writing, that's that side. And then this is kind of more like a felt tip marker side. Um, I freaking love this brand, you guys. 
they don't pay me a penny. They don't even know I exist, which is totally cool, but they are amazing. So we got this little guy here, how cute. And if you want to take it to the next level, we have the edible glitter sprays. It's simply the dry dust in a dry dust pump. And look at that, edible glitter. I'm super obsessed. It's kind of embarrassing how obsessed I am about this, but that's why we're here. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm going to check on the cookies that have been in the dehydrator for a while clean off my hands. This is a great time for questions. Oh, let's get the cookies. So that's one. We did have a, a bit of a longer question, but maybe yeah, while well, you're it. baking, it's fun to answer. Uh, at which age did you start baking and did you go to some baking school or did you just <laughs> teach yourself? If yeah. that's too long, we can save for the Q and A, but it's out there if you well, want. Well, let's do it. Let's in. do it real quick yeah. because um, I actually I have to let the cookies kind of cool down after I've taken them out of the dehydrator. That way, you know they they solidify a little bit more as they cool. We put them in at ninety five degrees. They're still they're dry a little bit to the touch. So let's talk quickly about baking as they cool. Um, I am a first generation Chinese immigrant. I came here when I was six years old and I didn't become a citizen until I was 18. I've never touched an oven in my life. My family used the oven as storage, as did a lot of um, immigrants, because we just didn't have that in China. And I didn't touch any baked good, really, until I was in college and I discovered the French macaron. Um, and I, I was obsessed. I didn't know what it was, but I needed to be on a mission to figure out how to bake those things. And that was like a five year journey in on itself because there just weren't enough resources and blogs back then. So I developed a recipe. I created an Excel sheet that <laughs> where you input how much egg whites you have and then it'll calculate how much almond flour and powdered sugar you use. And after that, it was like all bets are off. So I was self-taught. I was in school for engineering. I needed something stress relieving and baking was really that outlet and over the last 10 years really fostered and developed that skills. So um, never went to school, self-taught, but not self-made because you know there's so much support from everybody around the world. And yeah, just learned trial and error. And it's, it's fun, it's a lot of fun. It's very fulfilling, um, but it requires a ton of patience. So that's a little tidbit into my history. Thank you for asking. Thank you for the curiosity. All right, so I have here this guy and this guy. They just came out of the dehydrator. So you can tell they're quite shiny. That's how royal icing behaves. If it's dried with airflow, it'll dry shiny. And if I run my finger gently along the side, you can tell it's already a little dry. We still gotta be really, really careful to make sure that we don't dent it because in order to fully dry in our dry California climate, I let these sit uncovered overnight, eight to 12 hours before they're ready to stack or package. For our cute little seahorse cookie, we're going to be putting some seaweed down, dropping some sprinkles on it, and adding just a little bit of extra dimension for uh, the air bubbles. So you can kind of see it's all a single layer right now. The white dots kind of settled into the same layer as the blue. I've got my cute, beautiful sprinkle mix here. Guys, this is a custom sprinkle mix that we made a while back. And my favorite sprinkles are Sweet Apolita sprinkles. You guys can get a 10% off coupon um, on our website under Sweet Deals. Sweet Apolita is located in Canada. They're not paying me to say anything. They're, you know, not even anything, but um, they are fantastic and I love them and their sprinkles actually taste really good. These particular ones are not Sweet Apolita, um, but this is what I had that was closest to Mermaid. You can kind of tell it's like, let's see, can we get that light in there? It's like beachy themed. Okay. I've got icing mixed here. This is a very stiff consistency icing. It behaves more like buttercream or like toothpaste is how I would describe it. Again, we teach you how to mix all these various consistencies in our course, but the way we cut it is going to be a little bit different. 
so that we can make leaves with it. So if we want to demo on our Nada cookie, we've got our seam right in the middle and we are going to basically apply pressure to make leaves. Depending on how much pressure you apply, you can make the teeniest, tiniest of leaves or a big guy. And that's all with the same, same tip, just varied pressure. Okay. So this is how we're going to make our quote, quote, seaweed. So are you just, Question? are you cutting, are you cutting at an angle along the seam? Is that how yeah. you're getting that? Check it out. So the way I've got this done is it kind of looks like it's at a point. So it's like cut like this with the seam right down the middle, just like that. And we're going to lay on our, our seaweed. You don't have to be perfect. You know, these are, these are still cookies and they are kind of works of art, but they're cookies first and my cookies are meant for eating. Some cookies are like super bespoke and you want to use them and keep them as kind of a keepsake. Not us. We eat our cookies here. Just getting some texture on there with the various sprinkles we've got going on. You can get fancy and get tweezers if you'd like. And then we're gonna lay on our seahorse. So right now, this is what this cookie looks like. There's already a lot of dimension and our cookies are really not that sweet. So it, it's meant to be eaten with the icing to kind of cut down on how sweet it is. And then you'll get the cookie recipe and everything in the course as well. This course is loaded. And then we're going to pick up our little guy here I'm going to put down a little bit of icing just to act as more glue for him. And then I'm going to carefully lay it like this. So now he is hanging out bottom of the ocean. I just, I want to extend that a little bit. Right. How cute, right? Let's see. Let's bring this light in so you can see what he looks like. Very dimensional, very cute, kind of a minimum effort sort of thing. And if you want to really make it pop some more, you can actually add on some white dots on top of the white dots that you had already piped. And that will give you more dimension. So, Royal icing cookies, when it comes to dimension, is about layering and effects on each layer to make them pop. How cute. So this guy is done. Lisa, hey, Jonah. I, feel, I feel like this is a good time to ask. If you're making like a batch of these cookies, how long yeah. will it take you? Uh, too long. Um, <laughs> so probably for me, because I've just gotten so fast at it. When we take into consideration baking the dough, baking the cookies, cutting them out and baking them, making your base icing, coloring your icing, bagging your icing and doing the design, it's probably three to four hours per dozen cookie, which is why people charge, you know, 40, 50 bucks easily for this, because even then you make like five, $6 an hour. So there's, it's definitely an art. And um, I'm here to kind of show you guys the behind the scenes to improve the appreciation for it across the board. So these guys are done, yay. And then we have time to just finish up this cutie. Let's show you what the shell looks like right now. You can do some very simple things to elevate this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to add some sprinkles down here so that we can um, give it a little dimension. I'm going to do it in the same color as the base. That way the icing is not taking attention from the sprinkles. So I'm going to add some icing down here as glue. Twist this guy, shove it in. Put your sprinkles on there. Decide what sprinkles you want where. Feel free to use tweezers to make sure you can get the look that you really want. 
And for us, you know, this is good enough for now. So a little bit of sprinkles down here. And then I'm gonna take my purple because I want a little bit of a contrast and I'm putting loops. Let's see. Oh, I didn't cut it. I should probably cut my tip, huh? Probably cut my tip. Starting in the middle, we're just going to put some dimension on this cute, cute shell. And again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect for it to look super, super cute. So now we've got these two cookies done. And if you want to get super fancy with it, and you know, just to, you know, we're always here to be a little bit extra. Decorated cookies are already pretty extra. But I'm going to grab some of my yellow or gold paint and simply accent some some of my seaweed areas with a little bit of gold. Again, totally optional, but every little bit helps. So that's that. And this is a, this is a quick kind of taste of what those cookie decorating classes that we offer are kind of like. So Jonah, back to you. I got icing on my face. Oh my God. Ah. See, it's a mess. All right. That's that's what it does though when you're making this. Yeah, uh, it's like that. That is so. I thank you so much, Lisa. I can clearly it, the practice is so clear. Yeah. I I should have known better to have some piping bags, so I made a pretty disastrous you cookie here. You should show. I want to see it. Did you do it? I I I was well. I mean, it's it's pretty terrible. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's you know what. It's going to be delicious and it's super cute. <laughs> well, and I, I love even just seeing it. it's so simple how much you can do with so little, like those piping bags alone. I had yeah. uh, Ingrid here was saying she made just the creativity. Ingrid was saying she made some sand with a combo of sugar and cinnamon and yes. cardamom, which looked pretty good. And so just the room for creativity is so cool. Yeah. Uh, and I it's had another. Endless. Yeah, and another person saying they were just they would feel bad to eat any of these cookies because oh, you see oh the amount God. of work that goes into it. It is. And you know, all those like sped up Instagrams and TikToks are so deceiving because they're like, oh yeah, 30 seconds, look what I can whip out, right? Right. And then you do it. And then you're like, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> no, you can't do it in that time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, th and thank you so much for taking this time to share with us. Uh, for everyone yeah. watching, we are going to open up for a Q&A shortly here. Uh, okay. But while those comments are populating in, do want to mention that Lisa is offering a course here. The course is Decorated Sugar Cookies from Baking to Packaging. Uh, I'm going to have the link in the comments here. And then we will also send that along with the email that's going to have a replay and all of that for everyone mm -hmm. watching. Uh, Lisa, would you want to take a second while people are starting to populate with questions and just say like a couple of the things that are covered in the course, maybe some of the additional things they'll be learning? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so first of all, thank you guys for being here. Hopefully that was fun and you picked up some tips and tricks. Um, the course that we're offering is probably one of the only ones in the world that's full on end to end cookie decorating, which makes it super unique. So at the beginning, you go through the science of the dough and the icing and the whys and why you're struggling with things like your dough spreading and why you need an oven thermometer. We go mm -hmm. through all of that. I give you all my recipes for my doughs, my icing. And these are the ones I used in my cottage food business. Like I actually used to bake like for people and <laughs> we would take custom orders and everything. So these are the real recipes that went into that. Um, there are modifications for your dough, so you get a ton of different flavors that you can play with just in case sugar cookies get boring. We go through a whole series of piping techniques, and then using those techniques, I show you how I design my sets. So how do we go about creating these beautiful cookie sets? And I show you my process, which is super cool. And for someone who can't draw, if you can't draw, no worries, because I can't draw either. I can do this. You got this. You can do it too. We go through three seasonal classes. So the course comes with three seasonal classes and some techniques classes. So you can do like Mickey mini cookies, which are super fun. 
there's a Christmas class, um, there's a Halloween class, and there's a fall class. And I'm also going to be adding our beachy on the beach course to it in about the next month is really what we're targeting. So you'll get all four classes for free. And then I walk you through packaging, what your packaging options are, why packaging is so important and how to store everything when you're done with it. So it's a lot, it's a lot of content. That's an immense amount of value. Yeah. yeah. So, and I don't know if I mentioned for the people watching for the next week, you're offering $27 off that course. Yeah. And then you're also saying, in addition, there's going to be this beach specific course added. Beach specific, yep. That and is then awesome. One more thing is like, we're not going to just like give you the course, leave you run away and just hope you get it. If you need any help, there's obviously like in Teachable, you can ask questions, but mm -hmm. we also have a private Facebook page where anybody who takes a course from us, you can really lean into that community and get help from people around you all over the world. It's, uh, we have 1500 members in it about right now. Okay. And everyone's so helpful and so supportive of you guys. So it's really nice. Well, I imagine in that course too, you'll, it's very clear about what tools yeah. you need and where to get them and all of that. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. All of the materials, everything is linked. Yeah. Well, we, we got some good questions rolling in. So if okay. we want to hop in also just to all those viewers, feel free to also share some of your favorite takeaways or just say thank you to Lisa as we're answering these questions it means a lot that you're all here. Uh, I'll start with a very, very practical one. Um, are you using a special dehydrator or is it just a common one anyone can get? All right. Hey, Allison, thank you for asking this. Um, super good question. I am using any dehydrator that you use for like beef jerky or vegetables or, you know, fruit. I actually have this whole YouTube video on it that's like 40 minutes long if you really want to deep dive into what dehydrators I prefer and why. So you can just Google Borderlands Bakery Dehydrator. We got it all for you. Awesome. Uh, next one here, and I noticed this too, uh, saw you holding your arm. Is that part of a technique to be more it's precise not. or what is it? So here's why Stop. I do that. All right. So you guys see how I'm kind Girl, of, maybe. I have to be more towards the middle because of the angle of my stream but normally when i pipe i'm like this and i have a little bit of a table holding my arm up because that helps me have kind of like a smoother flow and it takes all the pressure off of my bicep and my forearm so this it's i'm like this because of the camera angle but usually i have my arm on the side of the table so hopefully that helps that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. uh, where was the next one here? I was getting coming. Does eggless baking is eggless baking included in your course? It, it is not. Um, however, if you need any suggestions for egg substitutes, we can happily give you that. And there are actually a lot of great egg substitutes now on the market. Like just egg is fantastic. If anyone's ever used that, you can also use a flax egg. We do have vegan options. Um, that we can convert for you. So if you buy it and you're like, I can't use eggs, I can't use whatever, drop us a message and we will send you the alternatives. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I got another, this was from Jessica. What are the different icing textures you need and how do you mm -hmm. know when you are there? Um, consistency of your icing is actually one of the most important things that you can learn when you work with royal icing. We teach that in our course in quite a lot of detail. So your flood consistency, it, it's got a certain look and feel. It's about the water to dry ratio, but it's also about your environment because the humidity in the air heavily affects how your icing behaves. We teach you through that. We teach you through using the base icing, watering it down to, to get it more loose, and then adding more powdered sugar to get it more stiff. So by playing with those uh, uh, parameters, you will figure out what type of consistency you need for what look. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, coming to another, Allison had one more question there. How far in advance can you make these modeling chocolate pieces? Cool. So modeling chocolate behaves differently from fondant. I mentioned that earlier and it doesn't fully set all the way. I've made modeling chocolate pieces up to three months in advance. I've kept them in a cool, dark place. You don't need to put them in the fridge. For up to three months, no issues. They still taste like modeling chocolate. The yeah. outside will start to form a little bit of a kind of a dried layer, which is actually what we want so that it can keep its shape and everything. 
So about three months in a cool, dry place is solid. I bet you could go way longer than that. You guys, this stuff lasts forever. It's just like sugar, mainly. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay, we got we got some more rolling in. Let's go. Let's go. I love it. Uh oh, this is kind of a, a bizarre one, but love asking because it's so Let's cool go. they're tuning in I, all the I'm way. A, I'm an open book. Anything. If we order items from your website, will they del will Ooh. do you deliver to Kuwait? Okay, so international shipping in COVID has been the most one of the most challenging things we've dealt with. So we've actually turned it off for a lot of places. You can send us an email, help at borderlandsbakery.com with your shopping list and we can manually create an order for you or at least give you a shipping quote so you can decide if you even want that or not so reach out we'll help you out awesome yeah and then i think i got one more question here just to wrap up because it's very relevant here they were asking and yes i was having the same little disbelief here so if you buy the course today will the under the sea be included later on Absolutely. just to clarify that yeah I'm actually filming that today after we get off this and we will be adding it to the course. I'm targeting a month. If we're a little late, please be kind, but it will, of course, we will for sure add it in. Awesome. And one yeah. more similarly kind of re relevant. I personally signed up for the full cookie oh. course and macaroon course, which is so awesome and want to say it has been totally worth it. There's so much great information. Not so much a question. I just thought you it was worth sharing. We love this. Thank you guys so much. That's like, that's really why we do this period. Yeah. So uh, Lisa, I'm, I think we're pretty much wrapping up here. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Did you have any last thoughts, any last mm -hmm. little piece of advice you want for people? I think your story is awesome that you came from biotech into baking <laughs> and all of that. I, I guess my question is like, going from a totally different industry into this one, do you have any advice for people looking to switch industries like that? Because I imagine yeah. it's intimidating sometimes. Yeah, um, we actually interact with a lot of people who kind of want their side hustles or their hobby to become, their passion to become something that they can make a, make a living off of. And it's it's hugely important to me that we continue to foster that. But it's really about being it's it's combining being practical and pushing yourself and understanding yourself. So sometimes some people know that they're not meant for the corporate world mm -hmm. and they need they have that calling to go and chase whatever it is that's for them. Be patient with yourself, but also really understand what you're willing to give up along the way, because I can tell you when I first started I worked every day until two to three a.m. and I'd get back up. I'd have a seven a.m. call because I would work with people in Europe. It's not easy, and but if you if it's a passion, you'll find a way. But also be practical. So understand it's a lot, and people don't talk about it enough. And be patient with yourself, but also be practical and figure out what your money is going to look like. Very important: <laughs> health insurance, four hundred one k, you know, all that practical stuff. Um, if anybody wants to chat about that in detail, I'm super passionate about it and I'm happy to help. So reach out, please. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Lisa, for sharing your time and your expertise. For everyone watching, I'm sharing one more time the link for the course that she's offering today. For the next week, it's going to be $27 off. Also, feel free as we're wrapping up here just to say any more thank yous. It means a lot to us that you all came. Yeah. If you enjoyed the course today, please subscribe and like our YouTube channel. We love doing these Discover courses and excited yeah. to offer more. Um, Lisa, thank you so much. Hey, thank yeah. you, Jonah. This is fun. Cheers. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Goodbye, everybody.